So, this is gonna be a bit of a different video. A few months ago, I did a video on Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, which, at the time, was a direct response to Color Splash's initial announcement, which had the basic fan response of sending everyone into an angry frenzy. This game... Oh, this game. You see, after a string of Nintendo games that nobody asked for, and after initial reveal, nobody wanted, Nintendo having the gall to announce a sequel to Sticker Star of all things was... bold? I mean, that that's a word for it. But now that it's been out in the public for a while, and a thank you to Nintendo for providing me a copy in the first place, what is the verdict on the final first-party Wii U exclusive? It's actually really good. Color Splash has been marred with controversy ever since it was first revealed, with a bunch of arguments going around about how Paper Mario should be and this game simply isn't covering it. And I figured, instead of doing a typical review, let's make things more interesting. Let's put Color Splash up head-to-head -head with the game that Paper Mario fans will claim is the be-all and end-all of the series, The Thousand Year... It's thousand Year Door. I've done good with this take, I'm keeping it. So... Let's go! First things first, the paper elephant in the room, Sticker Star. Yeah, game's garbage. I mean, fine, as a video game, you could do much, much worse, but in terms of Paper Mario, well, the only thing resembling the games prior are the characters, and quite frankly, even that is pushing it. Overall, it's not all bad. I mean, we got sombrero-wearing Shy Guys. Needless to say, making a direct sequel to seemingly pad out the Wii U's already barren final year definitely made nobody happy. I mean, look at me. I wasn't happy. I mean, come on, why can't they just go back to what worked before with Thousand Year Door, right? Original characters, unique locations, customizable movesets and abilities. It was a grand RPG adventure, man. But all right, I guess I'll go into Color Splash with a bit of an open mind. The game begins with Mario heading to a mysterious island after receiving a mysterious letter. Huh, okay, well, I mean, off, off on the right foot, I guess. And oh, 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 oh my, oh my god, that... I, I don't know what to make of that, actually. That's just pretty weird. I can't feel my pants. <laughs> okay, that, that was actually kind of funny. After Toad essentially dies, you get the ability to paint with your hammer. And just like that, reincarnation. Oh, and this? This is Huey, your partner on the adventure. Your one partner. See, that's another thing. Paper Mario used to be known for taking enemies, putting clothes on them, and just like that, that was enough to make them friends with all new unique characteristics. They were all peppy, colorful, and just overall pleasant to be around. Well, I mean, except for Admiral Bobbery. A sea captain refusing to acknowledge his love of the sea because he can't forgive himself for his wife's death? N Nintendo, what, what the hell? Kirsty was also a bit of a dud, so I'm not really expecting much from her successor. Hold up, what in the lost levels is going on here? All right, I take it back, I love this guy. I could honestly spend the entire video reinforcing this point, but the game is just funny. Not so much, you know, bursting out in laughter funny, more like... You know. My enjoyment of the game was completely set when I defeated Morton Koopa, and he's like, Morton, more like, Leston. That's perfect. That's it. That's, per that's perfect. However, this does sort of lead to a massive problem. There are so many toads! See, before, the different towns all had these species that, well, weren't toads, and some of them were even entirely brand new. And even when there were toads, at least a lot of them looked different. These guys here all have unique outfits. Why don't the Professor or the Mountain Sage in Color Splash? And hey, the joke's on you, I swapped the two of them. Gotcha. But this makes me sad. The adventure and plenty of the toads within are filled to the brim with little jokes and one-liners, but some of that impact is undoubtedly weakened when you're interacting with mostly throwaway characters. Honestly, the story is not really worth mentioning here either. Peach gets kidnapped by a possessed Bowser. Get her back. 
That's that's it. The end game is clearly not enough reason to see the adventure through. However, that being said, the next level guarantees some more jokes and funny moments, so I guess I'll dive into one more level. Each one tries its best to throw something new at you, and over time, Huey actually becomes kind of awesome. Ultimately, it does suck not having an interesting plot, but personally, while I didn't really care about saving Peach, I was actually excited to just continue and see what the next area would offer. One of the levels is just a straight up throwback to Mario 3, and it's worth the wait to get there. But okay, Thousand Year Door, back to talking about this gem. Simply put, this is a really well done beginner's RPG. Not saying beginner in a bad way, mind you, but once you expose yourself to the likes of Xenoblade or Persona, yeah, Paper Mario becomes pretty bare bones. If only Paper Mario allowed you to date. Hmm. Uh, but anyway, I would say the simplicity works in this game's favor. Rather than having a gripping plot with characters suffering from inner turmoil and constantly tossing out life messages, you have a light-hearted adventure with Mario and friends getting into a bunch of mischief, not unlike the game before it. But this time around with a darker overall plot with not only needing to rescue Peach, but the evil x knots that have her wanting to use the princess to revive the Shadow Queen and dominate the world. What this means is throughout the adventure, Mario will join a wrestling league and stop a town curse that transforms people into pigs. But ultimately, it's all a quest that eventually sends him to the moon to destroy the evil organization's stronghold before entering a palace that was sealed behind a massive door for a thousand years that was meant to contain said Shadow Queen after she destroyed the city where Rogueport now stands. That's, that's pretty deep stuff. Rather than focusing on constantly being funny, your main focus is the end goal of saving the world. It just so happens that your path getting there is... a weird one. This is like the closest to an anime with a bunch of filler storyline that we've ever seen Mario get himself involved in, and it's pretty great. My last big point of discussion is about the gameplay, and, well, this is gonna be where things get a bit ugly. The Thousand Year Door isn't really fun to play. Okay, whoa, 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 back up, back up before you all form an angry mob and get your pitchforks ready and try and take me out. Or even worse, clicking the thumbs down button. L let me explain myself first. The worst examples here are the obvious ones. Chapter 4 is a straight line that you simply walk back and forth through multiple times and that's really it. Chapter 3 is a bunch of gimmick fights with occasional basic exploration. And don't even get me started on this guy! But really, aside from that, most of the game is simply pretty linear. And while the locations are unique and enjoyable to explore, I wouldn't necessarily use the word fun. Don't get me wrong, I adore every chapter in this game just based on the setting and aesthetics. But oftentimes, it can kind of feel like mind-numbing busy work. And those sections where you play as Peach and Bowser in between chapters, they're not really that fun either. They're more so just cute little interludes than anything else. Where the game becomes fun is in the battle system, with its use of action commands and partners with vastly different movesets. Each enemy has its own brand of moves to avoid as well, which was made really interesting when it's an enemy that Mario had never seen before. The boss fights are really great too, brand new characters that deploy new strategies that test all of your skills and reflexes. There's even some customization on top of that with how you equip badges or how you allocate your star points. People will often attribute an RPG's overall quality to the quality of the battle system itself, so it's quite easy to see why the game is so highly regarded there. And what's hilarious is Color Splash got these two aspects reversed. Exploration is a lot of fun here. Pretty early on, you have access to multiple levels at once, and sure, only one of them is the true path to progression, but it still sort of has this feeling of being an open world. Just because you're going down a pathway to the big paint star, doesn't mean you're going down a straight line, you'll be going all over the place to get what you need. And with each level offering, again, something unique, in combination with the humor, and even these little unpainted spots that just beg to be colored in, I found the exploration to be, overall, a lot more fun. However, the battle system still kinda sucks. 
Sticker Star was a train wreck in this regard. Poor implementation of a poor idea. Color Splash, on the other hand, is a better implementation of still kind of a poor idea. This time around, cards are your main form of attack, but on the bright side, many of them have multiple uses in one card, and really, that alone makes battles go by very quickly. They all do have one use, meaning that once you attack, that card is gone forever, but you'll rarely ever be running low on your deck. Most of the battles are mandatory too, so at least you're not constantly trying to avoid running into enemies. And while the bosses are just returning characters, they're pretty enjoyable to fight against. They do basically require the use of a special thing to defeat, just like Sticker Star, but Color Splash makes it extremely obvious on what you need to get and making sure that you get it, so it's never really an issue. But no matter how much defending I do, having no experience points, that still really blows. Thankfully, with mandatory fights, at least you get rewarded with some progression, but this flaw really shows when you do end up getting into a battle with a random enemy and you want to smash your face directly into the gamepad. Oh, and yeah, you're required to use the gamepad too to pick out your cards and flick them to the screen. It's dumb. The side content is kind of lame too. These temples where you play rock, paper, scissors, they're just painful. Also, just a personal request. Stop bringing back the Koopalings for every Mario game. You can't really get much lazier than them at this point. At least bring back Rock Hawk. That's really all I need. But yeah, remember when I said that a lot of people base an RPG's quality just on the battle system? This is why people still don't like Color Splash. This may have come off as a bit of a rambling mess. My point is, Thousand Year Door and Color Splash do things very differently, but also do each of those things extremely well. TTYD has the epic plot with a wide array of characters that's relatively light on the jokes, but strong with its charm and its battle system. Color Splash has a forgettable plot with forgettable characters and a mediocre battle system, but its reliance on constant humor and fun world exploration actually works. And what that means is for both games, that results in a driving purpose to see the adventure through to the end. Sure, they both have their problems, but the positives greatly outweigh the negatives in each. Yeah, it does really suck that intelligent systems would rather make Paper Mario an adventure game rather than a traditional RPG, but if they continue with the series with how they developed Color Splash, I really don't think I'd be that upset. Uh, I may be looking too deep into this. Bottom line, both games are really good, and if Color Splash is indeed the final Nintendo exclusive on the Wii U, it's a good game to end the console on. And don't worry, it may be showing some signs of aging, Thousand Year Door continues to be awesome as well. Hopefully this cooled down some of the arguments. Probably not, but now we can move our attention to something that's a bit more important, like this. Washing machine in the US, washing machine in Europe. Has video game censorship gone too far? You tell me. Thanks for watching everyone! If you liked the video, maybe click the like button and check out more of my Mario content right here, like my earlier video on Thousand Year Door. That is, if I didn't upset you with that whole, you know, the game's not that fun thing. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll most likely regret that, surely. <laughs>